Good morning. In, the, in his New Year's address, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un expresses willingness to hold the highest level inter-Korean talks under the right circumstances. A stormy situation hampers search efforts for the Asia, Asia Air Asia Flight 8501 limiting activity while the first victim identified is laid to rest. Some of the biggest stars gather for films set for release this year. Speaking of stars, which celebrities will make it big in 2015? And turumuk, or sailfin sandfish, is now in season. Joe McPherson shows us how to cook up some turumuk dishes in his kitchen on Korea Today, Friday, January 2nd, 2015. From Arirang News, this is Korea Today. Happy Friday, everyone. Thank you for joining us on the second day of the new year. I'm Ojin Ju with Kim Young and Kim Min Jung. Good morning, everyone. That's right. It's the second day of 2015. Lots of people wishing each other well. And there's a message written outside the Seoul Metropolitan Library that reads something like this. I like your blank just because. Blank, and you're supposed to fill that in, right? Right. <laughs> so wow. let's uh, try to give each other okay, a compliment. Okay, let's try it in Korean. 당신의 <laughs> Blank. 마음이 좋아요. 마음. 그냥. Hmm. I love. I like your heart. I like. Are you your saying that about me or Jinju? <laughs> both of you. Oh, both of us. Okay. Just because. I'll go. 당신의 미소가 좋아요. I like your smile. Just because. Aww. Are you saying that to me or are you saying both that to them? Both of you. <laughs> uh, I'll try this on Young. I, I like your. Hi. Uh, your goofiness, <laughs> just because. <laughs> Alright, well there's a lot to like about a person. All you have to do is see and tell someone what you like about that person, just because. Mm. Alright, start the year off great. Now we're going to jump to our top story for today. In an apparent extension of an olive branch, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un started off the new year with a speech hinting at his willingness to hold an inter-Korean summit under the right conditions. That's right. And this came just days after Seoul's proposal to resume high-level dialogue between the two Koreas. We'll connect live to our Unification Ministry correspondent, Hwang Song-hee, who joins us on the line. Good morning to you, Song-hee. Morning. Now, much of his 30-minute speech was really focused on the, quote, rewriting the history of the two Koreas. Uh, do fill us in. That's right, Min Jung. The North Korean leader said the two leaders should two Koreas should bring a big shift in inter-Korean ties by promoting bilateral dialogue, negotiations, and exchanges. He said he was willing to hold the highest level talks with South Korea, depending on the mood and circumstances. Now, this is the first time for Kim to mention a possible meeting with President Park Geun-hye since he took power in 2011. And if the talks indeed pan out, it would mark the first inter-Korean summit since 2007. But there are strings attached. Kim went on to make the usual demands to Seoul, which is to halt the annual military exercises with Washington and ban its media and activists from criticizing the North Korean regime. Now, this while pledging to stick to its so-called Pyongyang policy, which is the dual development of nuclear arms and the economy, guys. Now, Sung-hee, South Korea was quick to give its own reaction to Kim's speech. Indeed, South Korean Unification Minister Ryu Gil-je said he thinks of Kim's remarks as meaningful and conveyed his hopes for any form of inter-Korean talks to take place in the near future. Minister Ryu gave a press briefing late Thursday evening in which he said Seoul sees the need for practical and frank discussions on all pending issues, including the reunions of war-separated families and the possibility of a summit between the two leaders. Now, in a separate statement released ahead of the briefing, the South Korean government called on North Korea to accept its proposal for talks if it is indeed serious about improving inter-Korean ties. Now, so lots of ideas on the table there, including a possible summit between the two Koreas. What are the pundits saying about the prospects for dialogue? Well, there are mixed opinions among North Korea watchers. Some view the proposals for talks as being routine since neither side has put anything new on the table. But others expect to see more dialogue at lower levels this year, which marks the 70th year of independence and the 70th year of the division of the Korean Peninsula. President Park, who is now in her third year in office, will want to make some progress with the North. And Kim Jong-un could be trying to end Pyongyang's diplomatic isolation by seeking a breakthrough with Seoul. 
But you have to remember that South Korea is scheduled to hold its annual military drills with the U.S. in late February, which could lead to another angry protest by North Korea. Guy? Thank you, Sungi, for that report. In the meantime, President Park Geun-hye has expressed her wishes for peace and prosperity on the Korean Peninsula this year, which marks the 70th anniversary of Korea's liberation from Japan's colonial rule. Visiting the Seoul National Cemetery on New Year's Day, President Park, accompanied by Prime Minister Chung Hong Won, heads of ministries as well as presidential aides, paid respects to fallen patriots buried at the cemetery. In the guest book, she wrote she wishes for peace and prosperity on this piece of land in this landmark year. Earlier at the stroke of midnight, President Park sent a video message to the country's 650,000 strong military saying a peaceful unification should be based on a robust national security and a strong economic foundation. And a quick look at uh, South Korea's year in trade. Despite the global economic slowdown in 2014, Korea's exports rose to a new record along with the country's overall trade surplus and volume, setting new all-time highs. According to the Trade Ministry, 2014's overall exports reached 573 billion U.S. dollars, up 2.4 percent from the previous year, while the country's trade surplus peaked at 47 billion dollars. For the fourth consecutive year, Korea's overall trade volume surpassed $1 trillion, with the country nabbing the so-called triple crown in trade. The country's increase in exports was partly attributed to free trade agreements, producing significant increases in outbound shipments to the United States, the European Union and the ASEAN nations. So far, 10 free trade pacts with 48 countries have gone into effect, accounting for 39 percent of Korea's overall trade volume. That ratio is expected to increase to 60 percent once the trade deal with China goes into effect, along with four other pacts expected to be implemented this year. Good Friday morning. It's time to run through the front pages of your newspapers now. And quite a few stories regarding the two Koreas this morning, of course, on the local papers as well. Let's take, uh, let's take a look at uh, some, some of them here first on Pyongyang Shinmun. And this one, the headline says, there's no reason not to hold summit talks. We'll first take a look at this image here. This is what North Korean leader Kim Jong-un said yesterday in his New Year's address uh, that was televised across the country. And as you did hear earlier on in the program's headlines, uh, he spoke of making efforts to advance dialogue and cooperation with Seoul. He further called for a big shift in inter-Korean relations, declaring that he is willing to hold summit talks with South Korean President Park geun if the right conditions are met. Uh, the Park administration welcomed Kim's gesture and urged Pyongyang to show its sincerity uh, through its actions, not just words. Meanwhile, this article here towards the bottom of Chungang Ilbo is also about inter-Korean relations, but it's about what 10 experts here in South Korea have said. Uh, what they unilaterally said goes somewhere along the lines of must latch on to Kim Jong-un's remarks and improve inter-Korean relations. Now, The Daily interviewed five former unification ministers and five former foreign affairs ministers and asked how to improve uh, inter-Korean relations as well as Korea-Japan relations during the year 2015. And they said that in terms of Seoul's relationship with Pyongyang, the government must take this opportunity to hold an inter-Korean summit, especially fully taking advantage of the latest remarks by Kim Jong-un. Meanwhile, in terms of Seoul-Tokyo relations, the experts said it is time to aggressively pursue progress in bilateral ties because Korea's relationship with Japan acts as a key factor in Korea's diplomatic policies. And now moving on to another headline here on Joseon Ilbo. This is a side article. And this one is what uh, the president said. Uh, she said, must end 70 years of Korea's division. And uh, you did hear earlier on as well uh, this uh, earlier. Um, this is what President Park Geun-hye said in a New Year's video message to the nation's 650,000 service members calling for an end to division and Cold War tension on the peninsula. She started the first day of the year by paying her respects at the National Cemetery, welcoming the year of the Sheed. She also wished for peace and prosperity on the Korean peninsula as well. Wrapping up with a look at the economy here on the Korea Economic Daily. 
This one right here in the center. It says, boost for government officials, a must to revive the economy. This is what the Daily emphasizes. Now, key tasks for the year are reinvigorating the Korean economy as well as conducting structural reforms. Now, although it is the prime time now to perform regulatory reforms and push for aggressive administrative policy making, what's more important is how well and how much government officials are able to work to make all of this happen, the Daily says. It continu uh, continues on to say that the level of confidence and self-esteem of public servants has nosedived in 2014, particularly due to the tragic total affair incident and the criticism that they have been receiving for guanfia malpractices or bureaucratic ties to the private sector. Thus, the article says it would, uh, it would be crucial to help public workers rebuild their positive energy and spirit to revive the local economy. Now that was a look at our local headlines on this Friday. Now stock numbers were closed yesterday for New Year's Day again. So right back to you guys, Young and Min Jung. All right, thank you very much, Sunny, for that. And now for a check of today's weather conditions. I mean, it could, the New Year is starting off on a very, very cold note. I don't like this. Oh, that's <laughs> right. It's been freezing cold out there, especially in the morning when we do head out. Mm. Now this is apparently going to continue on to the weekend, so do dress warm if you do have any outdoor excursions that you're going to partake in. Let's go to Chun Song Cho for more on today's weather conditions and also the weekend. Good morning to you, Song Cho. Good morning, guys. To most of you, it's the first work day of the year 2015, and this morning we're starting off with bone chillingly cold weather. Cold wave advisories have been issued in the upper central regions and parts of Gyeongsangbukdo and Chungcheongbukdo provinces. Wind chill temperatures are 12 degrees Celsius below zero here in Seoul, negative 11 in Gangneung, and negative 7 in Daejeon. Frigid conditions are prevailing across the country. And adding on to that, snowfall is expected in parts of the country this morning. A few scattered snowflakes in the greater capital area and more significant snow will hit the southwest, reaching up to 8 centimeters, with an advisory being issued around the coastal area. Snow will stretch into parts of the southeast as well, with just less, less than 1 centimeter of powder expected. People should be careful of icy and slippery roads on their way out this morning. Now, conditions should clear up as we move further into the day as high pressure takes a uh, takes over the system. With that, let's take a closer look at today's temperature readings around the nation. Midday highs are slightly higher than yesterday, but still in negative numbers in Seoul and Daejeon. Things are a bit warmer in the southern regions with 5 and 8 respectively. Conditions should recover a bit by tomorrow afternoon. And on such cold days, you know what's perfect? Ice skating in the heart of the city. I will get back with you on that later in the show. Now, time now to get a check on the global headlines we're following this hour. For that, we turn to our Eunice Kim at the News Center. Good morning, Eunice. Good morning, Jinju. Let's start with the latest on the Air Asia plane crash. The search operations are still ongoing, and I understand the first of the victims recovered and identified has been put to rest. Yeah, that's right, Jinju. She is so far the only person on that Airbus plane and route from Surabaya in Indonesia to Singapore, whose identity has been confirmed by Indonesian officials. 49-year-old Hayati Lutfia Hamid was handed to family members on Thursday after reportedly being identified by her fingerprints, among other means, according to officials. Now, she was immediately laid to rest, according to Muslim traditions, in a funeral ceremony in Surabaya, which is Indonesia's second largest city. Including the two bodies recovered on Thursday, nine bodies of the 162 people on board have been recovered so far. But bad weather continues to hamper the search for the victims and the plane's black box. The jet went down on Sunday after requesting, after the pilot had requested a route change though he did never issue a distress call. Reuters reports that some investigators believe the plane may have stalled as the pilot climbed too steeply while trying to avoid a storm. 
And yesterday was, of course, New Year's Day, but it also marked the World Day of Peace in the Roman Catholic Church. And to mark the occasion, Pope Francis called for people from all religions and cultures to bring human trafficking to an end. In his first Mass of the year at St. Peter's Basilica, the pontiff said everyone has a God-given right to be free and a calling to fight modern-day slavery. Following the Mass in his New Year's address, Pope Francis also underlined that peace was always possible, but that it must be sought. Almost 36 million people are estimated to be living in slavery today as manual laborers and also in brothels, this according to Australian-based human rights group Walk Free Foundation. Mm -hmm. And some New Year's Eve festivities went horribly wrong. I'm talking about China here. A deadly stampede in Shanghai killed 36 people. Do we know what caused this tragedy? So far, nothing officially, Jinju, and that is why Chinese President Xi Jinping has ordered an investigation into what exactly what happened in the city's historic Bund district on New Year's Eve. There were earlier reports that the rush that happened around 25 minutes to midnight leading into New Year's Day was triggered by people trying to collect fake cash dropped from the balcony of a nearby nightclub. But Shanghai police have rejected those reports on social media. Now dozens of people were crushed and 47 people injured in addition to those 36 deaths you mentioned. The probe reported by state TV will likely look into whether there were enough police officers to control the thousands of people outside uh, to count down to the new year. Chinese media also reported other New Year's Day festivities in the city were canceled following that deadly stampede. Well, it's really heartbreaking to start the new year with such tragic news. We hope to hear more of the good news this year. Thank you, Eunice. Sure thing. And still ahead on Korea Today, which celebrities will make it big in the year 2015? We handpicked the most promising talent, ranging from movie stars to K-pop singers. They may appear to be new blood, but these faces have been around for years. We look at the hidden gems now enjoying their much-delayed spotlight. So second day of the new year and last year in 2014, we saw records being broken at the box office, both in the domestic category and also Hollywood films as well, and the number of moviegoers in Korea. And it doesn't look like it's going to slow down anytime soon. Joining us is Im Yoon-hee with more on this. Good morning. Good morning. So right, last year actually produced some of my favorite movies, and I think overall set a really high bar of expectation for this year. Well, that hasn't phased the Korean movie industry. Some of the top actors and actresses have, uh, have gathered. Uh, and they've been hard at work with some of the top directors and producers as well to set a high note for this year. Take a look at a sneak preview of some of the movies to expect 2015. The biggest star actors and actresses have come together for the Korean motion picture world of 2015. <laughs> To start things off, actor Song Kang-ho will be starring in the Joseon Dynasty set film, Sado, as the intelligent King Yeongjo, father of the brilliant crown prince Sado. Actor Yoo Ah-in and actress Moon Gun young are also set to appear, U.S. Sado and Moon as his wife, a volatile dynamic between father, son and daughter-in-law. And 2014's hit Roaring Current showed an unexpected side to veteran actor Che Min Sik, who's taken on another period film. The Great Tiger tells the story of Chosun Tigers and the tiger hunter Chun Man Duk, played by the charismatic actor. And actor Lee Byung Hoon, known for his active role with Hollywood, has two more films on the horizon. In The Insiders, he plays the role of a gangster who does the dirty work for crooked politicians. And after the tables churn, he plots his revenge. He will also be showing off his action skills as a skilled swordsman in the Koryo Dynasty set film, Memories of the Sword. He'll be starring alongside Cannes Festival Award winner Chun do Yun, who plays the role of Seolang, another swordsman fighting for justice. And actor Lee Jung Jae is set to star in the film The Assassination, along with actress Chung Ji Hyun. And Hallie Yu favorite Lee Min Ho is also scheduled to make an appearance in the action movie Gangnam 1970, a film set against the backdrop of a politically corrupt Gangnam. 
2015 is also the year of the golden age for actor Ha Jung Woo. Set to premiere on the 15th of this month, the film Chronicle of a Blood Merchant was directed by Ha, but stars the actor as well in the lead role. But that's not all. Internationally acclaimed director Park chan Wook is releasing a film this year as well. The film Lady already has many people waiting with high expectations. Lee jung jae and Jung ji hyun are just a couple of the faces building anticipation for this year's films. We'll have to wait and see with all the various genres and characters set to appear on the silver screens this year. All right, some big names to look forward to. We saw Ha Jung-woo as well as Lee Jung-jae. We'll probably be hearing a little bit more about him later mm -hmm. on on our program. But it seems like uh, just as Lee Byung-hun did, uh, a lot of Korean actors and actresses are making their push into Hollywood. Right, so I think Lee Byung-hun's role in G.I. Joe really got the ball rolling, but the Korean movie industry has been making some uh, leaps and strides in terms of going abroad. So the Gangnam 1970 movie starring Lee Min-ho, uh, that movie actually apparently sold to the Chinese movie market for about one million U.S. dollars. Uh -huh. Right, so that's you know a huge plus for the Korean movie industry. But also last year's hit drama My Love from the Star, uh, that apparently is being adapted by ABC, which is a broadcast network in the U.S. And so really, the Korean movie, movie industry will see more of it all over the world. The industry as well as the actors right. itself, right? Themselves, right? Now the Korean movie, uh, we mentioned that it ended on a very high note. It was, right. it was, it was a record-setting year for it, right? Right. Many people were saying that, and actually that continued on to this year. So some of the top movies you can catch this weekend, last. Year, uh, last week actually ended uh, with the with the box office showing Ode to My Father as number one, The Con Artist as number two, uh, My Love Don't Cross That River, that documentary as number three, mm -hmm. and of course uh, the Korean movie The Royal Taylor was close behind. So these are just a few of the movies you can catch this weekend. Uh, but really, we really re wish good luck to the Korean movie industry, and they really have been uh, putting a foot out there, putting an arm out there, really trying new things. Not only that, just coming out with really good films in general, really right. entertaining films, thoughtful and meaningful and thought provoking at the same time. All right, thank you very much much for joining us. But by the way, Happy New Year. We didn't catch you yesterday. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Very much. Happy New Year to you, too. Sounds great. Thank you. And still ahead on Korea today, we're going to be looking at a dish which is prominent during the winter time because as the colder, as the weather gets colder, the more popular this dish becomes. And it features a little fish by the name of Torumuk. And uh, we're going to be taking a look at some dishes fe featuring that fried as well as soupy. They're plump, fresh, and perfect to enjoy as a winter specialty. Joe McPherson shows us how to cook up some of these Torumuk dishes in his kitchen, and we'll have some in the studio to try. I've never tried torumuks, looking really forward to good. that. <laughs> now marking the new year, there are dozens of changes that went into effect as of yesterday. Right, from cigarette price hike to minimum wage increase. Let's find out more with our Sami Sarang who joins us here in the studio. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, guys. There's dozens of changes, but let's have a look at the three that are receiving some of the most attention online. So first of all, the much talked about cigarette price increase. The price has jumped from 2.3 to 4.1 US dollars a packet. Second, smoking is now banned from all restaurants regardless of their size. If you're caught smoking, the restaurant will be fined around 1,600 US dollars and the smoker fined 90 dollars. And third, the minimum wage has increased by 7% from 4.8 to 5.1 US dollars per hour. This will affect 2.7 million people currently on the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. It might be um, mm -hmm. too early to talk about the effects this um, cigarette price hike have, but has it affected sales by any way? Right, so you're right. We only have one day to talk about. Compared to the last week of December, sales have apparently dramatically decreased in convenience stores, supermarkets and so on. And there are already people reselling pre-bought huh. packets online in the $3.4, $3.8 range. Hmm. Making this some... will be effective in cutting the, the rate of smoking in this country. Hopefully. Mm. Hopefully. Mm. Meanwhile, more than 5,000 international tourists have already booked themselves in for the upcoming Hwacheon Mount Trout Ice Festival. Now, this annual festival takes place in Gangwon-do province every year and you can try your hand at ice fishing. I don't know if you guys have done that. And have enjoyed the beautiful ice sculptures as well. The Ooh. festival takes, will be held for three weeks starting this next Saturday, January 10th. Huh, I was gonna go this weekend. No? Ooh. No, next okay. week. <laughs> right. okay. 
Meanwhile, on the entertainment front, as you guys might have heard, the hottest topic right now is about Lee Jong Jae and Im Se Ryong. Mm -hmm. Now, Lee Jong Jae is one of the hottest top actors here in the country with hits such as TV series Sand Glass in 1995 and film City of the Rising Sun in 1999 and New World in 2013. Now yesterday he came out and confirmed his romantic relationship with Im Se Ryong, heiress to conglomerate Taesang Group Fortune and ex-wife of Lee Jae Yong, the heir apparent of Samsung Group. Lee Jong Jae's confirmation came within hours of a tabloid releasing a series of paparazzi pics of the two dating. Mm -hmm. There has been numerous rumors about their relationship um, for a couple of um, maybe for four years yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. Wow. And there was even rumors about their marriage some years before. About them getting married, uh -huh. right? And every single time they've flatly denied it, saying, you know, we're just friends. Now, there are opinions differ on this. Uh, mm -hmm. One side, which is what Lee Jong-jae is sticking with, is that they really weren't an item back then, they were simply friends. On the other side, people are saying they were an item, but they were hiding it because Im se Ryong had just gotten divorced, she had two kids and didn't want all the publicity. Mm -hmm. well, wish them luck. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> all right, thank you, Mi Sang, for that. You're welcome. Mm. Now, do you skate? By any chance? Not a good skater. <laughs> when it comes to any winter sports activities, I think I have a no-go. <laughs> Me neither. But uh, our Chun Song Cho is actually standing by at the ice rink that's located right outside the, mm, Seoul, the Seoul, Seoul City. City Hall. Right. Uh -huh. Let's, Let's go, go to her right, right now. Over to you, Song Cho. Hi, are you all excited to go ice skating with me today? All right, but first you got to have the right equipment, right? If you don't own any, no worries. You can rent a pair of ice skates and a safety uh, protective gear here. And you can rent all of these and use the rinks for just one dollar. Yes, just one dollar. That's incredible, right? All right, so uh, let's move on to the rinks now. So this place gets installed uh, at ev every winter since 2004 at Seoul Plaza and it's uh, attracted about 2 million people so far. That's incredible. So it's uh, very popular indeed. And then uh, as you can see, it's already jam packed here. Things are looking busy with children and uh, people just having fun, ice skating. Uh, usually the opening hours are from 10 a.m. But uh, today, whew, all right, be careful. <laughs> so today, uh, the officials here were nice enough to open it up for us for Korea today extra early this morning I feel very special now all right so before I step into the rings of course I have to check that everything is nicely buckled and I'm wearing a helmet too and this is my first time ice skating okay I'm gonna I'm very nervous I don't want to fall in front of you guys on air that'll be just too embarrassing oh my god okay I think I'm doing quite all right Okay, I feel like Kim Yeon now. <laughs> okay, so if you're interested in, in coming here to skate, uh, you can visit the oh my god, you can visit their website for more information. Uh, you can book the tickets both on site and online. And you can even get some skating lessons. Oh, you see some people falling. Oh, should be careful. Okay, so you should. Uh, you can get skating lessons if you want to uh, here. And maybe I should learn, take some lessons too. Ooh, I feel like I'm falling. Oh, and then you see this banner that people are holding right now. Oh, it says Happy New Year. And then over here, so you didn't want to say. Okay, so these people are nice enough to hold this banner that reads Korea Today Fighting. Arirang It translates into uh, Go Korea Today and Go Global with Arirang TV. Okay, so I'm gonna end on that note. I know it's really cold these days, but come outside and then you can go ice skating here. Uh, you'll have so much fun with your families and friends. Yo, Monza, you know what? Okay, so with everyone here, I'm gonna end. Uh, we're gonna say, fighting Korea, Korea today fighting. So I say, one, two, three, Korea today fighting. All right, so one, two, three, Korea today.
Well, definitely the perfect time to go skating unless, of course, you're in Australia where it's summertime, right? Well, speaking of which, let's kick things off with the Korean national football team as manager Uli Stilke and crew look to finalize their preparations for the upcoming Asian Cup with a friendly against Saudi Arabia on Sunday. Now, with the National uh, Asian Cup in Australia kicking off in a week's time, the Korean national football team looks questionable with the lack of offense despite a rather stacked midfield. And with the 69th ranked Tegok Warriors facing off against the 102nd ranked Saudi Arabia on Sunday, the focus will be on the midfielders connecting with the strikers as Uli Stilge hopes the offense won't be an issue during their quest for their first Asian Cup title in 55 years. Now staying with football, FIFA has chosen 16 players to look forward to in the new year and one of those players was well, sensational Son Heung-min. Now with, the, with Son Heung-min enjoying a great season so far, scoring 11 goals with Bayer Leverkusen, FIFA has chosen the national team midfielder as one of the 16 players to look forward to in 2015. Now alongside Son Heung-min are players like Memphis Depay and Mario Goetz as Son Heung-min hopes to begin the new year by winning the Asian Cup in Australia. And now moving over to baseball this time, where two legends in the sport are set to receive the Pioneer of Baseball Award from the Office of Major League Baseball. And the two legends are former teammates in Park chan -ho and Hideo Nomo, who both played for the LA Dodgers in the 90s. The two pitchers will be honored by Bud Selig during the commissioner's retirement ceremony on the 18th in New York City. Now, Park chan was the first Korean player in the major leagues, winning 124 games in 17 seasons, while Hideo Nomo became the first Japanese major leaguer in 30 years as he won the 1995 Rookie of the Year honors and threw two no-hitters during his career. And now finishing things off in Formula One racing as the Korean Grand Prix was taken out of the 2015 F1 calendar once again. Now, despite the Korean Grand Prix being included in the provisional 2015 calendar last month, the latest 2015 calendar has the unpopular event scrapped for the upcoming season. Despite Formula One hoping to have 21 races in the new season, the calendar has 20 races throughout the year with the Korean Grand Prix now being left off in the season. Now, despite high hopes for the event returning amongst the F1 fans in the nation, the ongoing financial problems might likely scrap the race for good. And that's going to wrap it up for me. This has been SJ. Have a great rest of the day and see you guys again for your sports needs. I think it's safe to say that 2014 in the uh, entertainment realm was rather interesting, right? Mm, Lots of ups sure. and some downs as well, <laughs> right? But 2015, now who will be the new hot young bloods for this year? We'll get a sneak preview into that with Debbie Wan joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year, guys. Happy New Year. Year. Yeah, so the stars that we're going to take a look at today uh, may seem like newcomers in the industry, but it's been a while since they actually debuted. So here are the hidden gems of K Entertainment who are expected to make it big in 2015. Let's take a look. With the year 2015 comes new blood in the entertainment industry that will make it big this year. They're full of talent, packed with personality, and determined to make a splash. But look closer and you'll realize that many debuted quite some time ago. We'll look at some of the names who are expected to steal their delayed spotlight this year. First up on the list of hidden gems that will make it big in 2015, <laughs> She is considered one of the film industry's greatest discoveries last year, Chun Woo Hee. With her performance, she pushed aside established names like Kim Hye and Chun Do Yeon, kicking home the Best Actress Award at the prestigious Blue Dragon Awards, surprising many. It created a lot of buzz, not only because the movie was an independent film that most people had not heard of, the actress was also not really known to the public. In the independent film Han Gongju, she played the challenging role of a high school student who falls victim to sexual assault. Her subtle but deep portrayal of emotions received praise, 
not only from Korea but from audiences abroad. 관객들이 이 친구가 무슨 생각을 하는지 아니면 무슨 감정인지를 헤아려 헤아릴 수 있는 여지를 좀 둬야 되겠다라고 생각했고 관객들이 봤을 때 애쓴다라는 느낌은 받지 않았으면 좋겠더라고요. The actress has not been that well known since her debut, but she has played strong characters known for being scene stealers. In last year's cart, which garnered high expectations, she played the role of an energetic youth seeking employment, making her mark as an actress. And now, 10 years after her debut, she is finally at the peak of her career. <laughs> For her next upcoming film, Koksung, the actress says she is taking on yet another new challenge, and a lot of people are looking forward to what transformation she will make next. Second on our list of promising talents in 2015 is the singer turned actor Im Si Wan, who has made a successful 180 transformation and has been recognized for his profound acting. When idol stars say they're going to be in movies or dramas, expectations aren't that high. But with Im Shi Wan, it's a little different. He's been recognized for his acting already, and now it's normal to refer to him as an actor. Following his role in The Attorney, he spent a busy year with his acting. And he took it to the next level in the ever-popular TV series Mi Seng that skyrocketed into popularity in the latter half of last year. Unlike some idol stars who step into acting with lively and energetic roles, he won a lot of praise for his refined portrayal that depicted the younger generation in the workforce with great depth and accuracy. Im Si Wan has been on stage for five years now as a member of the K-pop group Zea. But on the silver screen, he captivates the viewers with a completely different charm. And behind this remarkable growth in his acting were long hours of practice and polishing for perfection. It's not just the Korean audience that is noticing his rapid advancement. Im Si Wan was handpicked by the Customers Council and Korea Consumer Report as a leading face and brand that will represent Korea in 2015. We sat down with an official from the council who explained why. Individual people themselves are becoming brands, and as these brands become the driving force behind the Hallyu movement, they help enhance the image of the country as well. That leads to more product purchases and growth in exports, so there can be a big drive in the economy as well. Third on the list of stars that will make it big is Kang Nam of MIB, who was also on the list of names to represent Korea in 2015, along with Im Si Wan. Kang Nam is now in his fourth year since debuting with the hip-hop group MIB. He landed a gig on an entertainment show towards the end of last year, where he was thrown into the spotlight with his quirkiness. Within just three months, he secured a spot on four television shows and is spending one of his busiest times since his debut. And his ability to sing a trot song to perfection despite being a hip-hop artist Kang Nam has managed to bring plenty of laughter at some of the most unexpected moments. On December 26, he put on his first single, What Do I Do?, which jumped to the top of the music charts, showing just how popular he has become. From the K-pop industry to the entertainment front, a lot of eyes will be following him throughout the year. Last but not least on the list of stars seeing their delight spotlight, it's the five-member girl group EXID that reversed people's expectations with their song climbing up the music charts at the end of last year. Their song Up and Down was released in August, but it failed to receive much attention at the time. But thanks to a fan video of their live performance that went viral, the group has stirred up a new sensation. The group was set to go on a hiatus for a while, but they put together guerrilla concerts following requests from their fans and have soared to the top of the charts.
They even returned on stage for K-pop shows, enjoying their newly found success. EXID did benefit from social media and their provocative performance, but I think they were able to create the sensation that they did because their underlying talent was recognized by the public. At the time of their debut, the girl group did stir up some expectations, having been produced by hit songwriter Shin Sa Dong Horengi. But they didn't manage to get their breakthrough among the flood of other girl groups until just recently. EXID has now established itself as one of the top K-pop girl groups, and what they will bring to the stage this year has a lot of people excited. Hidden gems of K Entertainment that have just begun making it big in their career. As they jump into their much delayed fame and popularity, plenty of eyes will follow them throughout 2015. So that was a look at some new faces, but that are actually not old new. new faces. Old new faces, yeah. new old faces. So they're <laughs> kind of like new, but they just didn't get their big break right. until recently. So how were they discovered would be the, the question. <laughs> okay, so let's start with Kang Nam, who is actually the lead vocal of uh, boy band MIB. Mm. Uh, he debuted back in 2011 with the group, but it wasn't until September of 2014 that he started getting attention after he came out on an entertainment show on TV. And he is you know, getting a lot of popularity from the fans for his fun and quirky personality. Mm. He's very down to earth and he's very open about himself. He talks about how once he only had five dollars in his bank account mm. and he has to live on like two to three hundred dollars per month. So mm. he's very open about his humble beginnings. Well, yes, five dollars better than me. I have one dollar in my bank account. Right <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Are you serious? Uh -huh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've been having some hard times. <laughs> now let's talk about the group um, EXID or right. Exit. I'm not sure which uh, you're supposed to go by, but the way they rose to popularity, that's, uh, that's kind of unique in itself. Right? right, so the girl group EXID actually debuted back in 2012, and they released the song We Are Up and Down, that's um, becoming a huge hit recently. Uh, they released it back in August of last year, actually, but it actually didn't get any coverage because that's when all the major girl groups like Sistar and Girls Day were releasing their summer songs. Mm. So it totally got covered, but it uh, a fan actually uploaded a fan cam video of their performance and it went viral in just three months after that. So around Aug October, the video just, you know, got big and mm -hmm. that's when the group started gaining popularity and they actually are at the top of the charts now in first place on some of the major K-pop shows. Through one fan wow. cam, huh? Mm -hmm. right? uh -huh. But no matter how talented you are, like in this entertainment industry, you really have to have that luck to be right. um, at the top of the um, industry. But um, these stars that we talked about, um, they were rather, um, they rather succeeded through the word of mouth mm -hmm. or word the of mouth SNS. recognition of the public, yeah, SNS, social media. You know, like the video, it went viral. So that's a sort of word of mouth on in the internet. And also the Ch actress Chun Yui that we talked about, she starred in an indie film called Han Gongju, and that was very well received on online and offline reviews. So that's another word of mouth. But we have to remember that all these entertainers, uh, yeah, timing and luck is important, mm -hmm. but they have to have the personality and the talent to back themselves up to be as successful as they are. Okay. Of course. So basically, you have to have it all, <laughs> right. and then that little stroke of luck to right. just yeah, you launch you to the to top. You have that right timing right. with the talent. You have to be prepared. Sure. Thank you so much, Debbie. You're welcome. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.
All right, so today we're going to be talking about a fish named Torumu. <laughs> Quite frankly, I didn't know such a fish existed. It's a new face for me. Beyond me, me. I mean, for me as well. I agree with you. I'm right there. But all apparently, it's really good when all the row has filled exactly. up on it. Exactly. That's Joe, what they're famous for. Mm, yeah. And Joe Metherson joins us to tell yes. us all about Torumu. Good and morning to you. Good morning. There School has been a lot of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, uh, it took me a while in the name too. <laughs> We've been really working on the name. So anyway, Dorumuk is a fish that is perfectly, primely in season right now because the flesh is really plump and sweet and it's full of that roe we've been talking about. So today I'm gonna cook a couple of dishes and Ooh. show you how to, how to make right. this wonderful fish during this time of year. With the new year now here, we're going to look at a special ingredient that tastes so much better when it comes to the winter season. And it's sailfin sandfish, or dorumu. This fish is in season from October to January, and other than during this time of the year, it's actually hard to get because there's not enough flesh on the bones. So, how about we try out a dish with this delicious fish? The roe is the best part of the fish, so you want to pick out the freshest that you can find. You don't want it to smell fishy, and when you press it out on it, the, the more resilience it has, the better. So firm and bouncy is what you want. The most loved dish using this fish is dorumuk jim. It's known for its spicy broth and clean tasting flesh, and rich roe that can really get your appetite going in this bone chilling winter. Another favorite is dorumuk gui, or grilled dorumuk. The golden brown color of it will get your appetite going along with its savory scent. Pop in some of that toasty flesh with beautifully packed roe, and it gives you a burst of flavors in your mouth. Now what I'm gonna make today is dorumuk malgantang. Now that's a type of soup and it has a really clean tasting broth. So it's soothing, but it still packs a punch. Now the, the Dorumuk itself is really good at this time of year because of this row you can see right here. Wow, this comes right out. And uh, it's also really full of unsaturated fatty acid, which makes it perfect to eat with vegetables. And it really makes a well-balanced meal. Our yuksu, which is, we're gonna start with a little dashima, which is a type of kelp. And we use this for making stocks. It's very simple. You just, you just toss it in the water and you just boil it. So these guys are really easy to, to prepare. All you have to do is just snip off the fins and get your handy kitchen shears. Really valuable in the Korean kitchen. Just lift up the fin right here and snip. You got one and then turn her over and lift up the fin and try to get right at the base of it and snip two and then we have to get the tail right over here so just snip that off snip and you're done now you have a clean fish so next you want to get your radish we have a nice korean radish you want to peel it and then you want to slice it to around a one centimeter thickness and then you want to get your tofu. What you want is a really firm tofu and you want to cut that up again to around a centimeter thickness. All right, so uh, next after we've chopped up our radish, we just arrange them at the bottom of the pot. And so we have our stock waiting for us here and we just slowly pour this on top of our radishes. And then then we get our nice little fishies and we just gently place them in. Now, if you're not comfortable using your fingers, you can use tongs as well. Just gently place them in. We have a little rice wine here to get rid of that fishy smell. So after it's coming to a boil, it's time to add your tofu and your other things. And last thing you need to do is you got a little sea salt right over here and just season it to taste. Mm. 
So if you're looking for something a little different and something that's a little fun for the kids, why don't you try a little deep fried dodo mook? Now here we already cleaned our fish and uh, afterwards you really wanna make sure you just dry them off really well with a kitchen towel. We have just a basic flour, so you can get some all-purpose flour uh, and just put that in here. And then, and you just put in a couple of eggs right there and uh, just a little bit of water. And you mix it up. Is you just get your fishies right here and just dredge them in some flour. Now, always make sure to season your flour a bit. And then get your batter and just let, let them take a little swim in the batter. And then slowly put them into your oil. Like that. With its crispy, crunchy taste, fried dordomuk is a pleasant treat for everyone. You know, this is the perfect season for eating dordomuk. And it's just full of great textures and flavors. Oh yeah, there we go. So here we have the dordomuk magentang, and then we have a little fried dordomuk right over here, dordomuk tigim. And I have a spoon. Let's try it out. Oh, wow. Oh, that is so good. I could eat this all day long. This is delicious stuff. Hey, let's try some of this fried fish. Oh. That's really good. Really, really good. Kids will love this. Ooh. Look at that yeah, soup. Yeah. <laughs> soup here. And it wow. is just boiling. Just and, and, and in Korean style, it has to be boiling at the table because there's something about you gotta have a little pain uh -huh. <laughs> with, with your pleasure. So uh, yeah, this is our uh, our tongue right here. I'm gonna spin a little bit out for oh, you. Interesting you that no, I row. guess it's not red. It's it's just white. It's kind of like the chidi mm -hmm. version mm -hmm. of meontang. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Meontang usually we put the uh, red chili pepper right, uh, powder right. in there, it's but this spicy, is the, but this, this is, is spicy, it is but spicy. It's, it's from the fresh peppers that are in here. Uh -huh. The chongyang gochu. There, I'll, I'll spin so a little much. bit out. Here, this would be a great hangover. On it's dish. excellent for hangovers. Oh, right. I would say so. And uh, being New Year, yeah. so this is why you great. brought it from your hangover last night. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, we'll see if I can remember anything from that. Here you uh, go. We'll, we'll share, Young and I. Uh, we'll share. Okay. So, oh wow, look at. The, the row here inside here. Yeah, you can here see that right there. Yeah, wow. it's, 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 it's a different like flavor that, from a right. lot of. Uh, I, I know. I know fish in this form uh, might not be. Some people might not be used to seeing the fish like this, but this is how the way we enjoy it. And basically, you can see that huge row in there. Mm, right. like a, look yeah. at that. Wow. Yeah, fish with the heads on, and then when you cook them like that, they open up. So they do look a little bit ghastly, but you, <laughs> once you get used to that look, they're really delicious. I, um, a really surprising taste. It's a very light taste, so people oh, it's who... spicy. Oh, oh yeah. Is oh, it? Yeah. Wow. Oh, Try yeah. some. It's looks really spicy. It can be deceiving then, huh? And the row it looks, looks cool. pretty plain. I'll just go straight out of here. Mm. Um, right. And actually, uh, yeah, it's really light, so Whoa, if, if people who aren't kick. really into seafood, this might be a good introductory mm. dish for them. Mm -hmm. And the row of the toru oh, nice. it pops in your mouth, and that's the right. fun of eating toru muk at this time of the year. Right, right. And uh, outside of this time of year, no row, and they're really skinny. So, uh -huh. uh, and uh, uh, also, there's a really funny story about this fish. Is okay. uh, there was a there was a uh, king in the Chosen Dynasty who was in hiding during uh, a war, mm. and he came across this fish called muk. Mm -hmm. and he loved it so much that he called it unong, which is like silver fish. Mm, right. So. Uh, uh, when he came back to the capital and he tried it again, it wasn't as good as he remembered it, so he called it Dodo Mook, which means uh, it's Mook again. 
Huh? Oh. <laughs> and then over the years, it went to Dorumuk, so uh, that's that how we know it now. This is great, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't smell fishy at all. And I'm dying to try the fried Oh yeah, try the fried version. one. Did you just see the row in here? Exactly. Like, it, you just bite into it, huh? Yes, yes. Okay, when, I'm just going to just use my hand fingers. Um, when they're mm. really small, you can just fry them and eat them bones and all. You don't really have to do much prep. Can you hear the sound? Oh, you just, you just eat the whole mm, thing? Mm, yeah, you don't really have to do much prep. It pops in your mouth. It's just like... Mm, 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 <laughs> yeah, mm. be prepared for that. I was I was surprised <laughs> when I first tried it. it wow. Was... It's it's a lot harder and chewier than I mm. had imagined. Yeah, it is a little a little harder. Uh, yeah, when you usually have fresh roe, raw roe, it tends to be... Uh, it tends to pop, but the mm. hard... Mm. It gets harder as you cook it, so be prepared oh. for that. It, it's, so if you want it a little bit um, softer, then you don't have to cook it as much, right? Well. Do you need sauce through. for this? Mm. Probably Dip it in the soup. Mm. And we have rice too you can have with that. Mm. Mm. Interesting, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, now since I, I'm imagining it's full of nutrition too because it's rose. Right, mm. right. In wintertime, you tend to have fattier fish and those good fatty acids that come from fish. Mm. So uh, that really helps you out, those omega 3s and all. Mm. Uh, and also, some recommendations since this is a very delicate fish, uh, you do want to wait till the soup is boiling before mm. you add the fish, otherwise they'll, they'll all break up. You mm. want to be gentle. Mm. Or if you're braising the fish, uh, just the basic rule of braising, keep it low and slow. Again, uh, if, you, if you boil it, do it too high, the fish will just break up in there because it's really, it's so small and so delicate. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite small compared to other fish. Mm. Oh, interesting. Thank you so much, Thank Joe, you. for bringing us Torumuk for the mm. first time. It's my first time ever oh. trying Kurumo. <laughs> You're quite impressed though. Oh, great. <laughs> All right, well, this is where we say goodbye on this Tuesday, or on this Friday. Uh, it feels like Tuesday. Why? Yeah. Because it's the second day of the New Year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good point. And thank I'm you totally so much. happy that I was able to get that down before I got a chance to speak. Well, thank you for joining us. We'll see you on Monday morning, the first brand new week of 2015. Have a great weekend. Bye.